Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today I'll be painting this adorable corgi puppy. I first start off like I always do painting the eyes. Getting the eyes to be as lifelike as possible is really important, particularly in portraiture, whether it be for puppies or even people. Eyes are often the first thing that we look at, hence why it's so important to get right. Once I painted the eyes, I started then to block out the colours all around the eyes using a Naples yellow and yellow ochre. This is always a really important part of my process as it gets rid of that blank white page. Once I'm happy with the muzzle, I then start to work on the nose, trying to get it as lifelike as possible by working with the acrylic while it's still wet and going back and forth with the white and the black. Then I switch to that Naples yellow and yellow ochre to fill in the rest of the corgi, as well as a light sort of cream colour for the corgi's tummy. Once I was happy with the colours, I then began to work on the details on the right hand side of the face. So this involved mixing Naples yellow, yellow ochre and raw sienna. By using a mixture of these colours, it helps me to achieve the depth of the fur. I then worked on the ear, so trying to get that fur texture with these light white highlights. The next step of my painting process was to paint that gorgeous smile of this little corgi. I did this by using a near black slash brown colour. I then mixed together a range of pinks to blend onto the tongue while the acrylic was still wet. I painted the richest part of the corgi's tongue towards its mouth as this was in shadow and then the lighter areas towards the outside where there is more light. Next up, I carried on with the detailed process of painting the fur using the blend that I mentioned previously for the right hand side of the face, but applying this on the left hand side. I should probably mention at this point, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to like it and also leave me a comment and let me know, as it's really encouraging when you guys interact with my work. I always find it quite fascinating watching my process back even other artists process as well. This particular painting probably took me around six hours but it's all condensed for you all in six minutes and I think when things are condensed down this way you can really see the thought process behind my work. For instance there was loads of different ways I could approach this painting, I could have painted all the fur at once, and done it layer by layer but as you can see I tackled this particular painting section by section so after I worked on the face I then began to work on the legs and then I switched to his little tummy. I always found white fur in particular to be quite challenging but I think that's because there's a lot of subtleties in white fur that you don't really notice with your naked eye. White fur definitely needs softer transitions such as really light greys. Next up was to get started on the background. For this particular corgi I chose a light lilac purple for the background. My reasoning for choosing this colour was that purple is contrasting with yellow and as there's a lot of yellowy orangey tones I thought it would really make this corgi pop. I'd say I begin to paint the background when I'm in the last phase of my painting. Once the background in, I can be much freer with my strokes, especially around the edges, to make that fur texture as it can overlap with the background. The next phase of my painting is to work on those final details. You can see my hand darting all around, switching from colours here and there, but I promise there is some method to my madness. At this stage, whenever I'm doing a puppy painting, it's all about those final details, such as blending the fur to make it realistic, especially the edges where it touches the background, blending fur between different colours of the corgi, for example where the white is blending in with the more beige colour of the corgi. 
The next part of my process is to further define these details so the separation between the pores and the corgi is really important to achieve an overall cohesive look. Next up in this stage of the process for me was to work on the ears of the corgi. I find at this stage it's really helpful to use a slightly watered down white to get those ear furs <laughs> because although I'm using broad brush strokes it gives the illusion that you can still see through the fur in the ears. This is a really important technique for me as it helps me to achieve a realistic look but also a painterly style with the way that I use broad brush strokes. Finally, for this particular painting, I decided to add some shadows to give some context and depth to this piece. And once I was finally happy, I added my little signature. I hope you've enjoyed watching my puppy painting process and be sure to check out the other puppies that I painted in my playlist. <laughs>